Okay, the recording has been started. Uh, please confirm if my screen is visible. Okay, are we good to go? Okay. Okay then. So uh, let us do a small recap. So the yesterday's topic was what? It was uh, the method overriding. Okay. So we discussed about method of I mean overloading is done. Uh, access modifier with respect to method overriding. I'm sorry, this is overriding. Okay, we discussed overriding with respect to access modifiers, right? And we also discussed method overriding with respect to final keyword. And we have seen so many cases to understand uh, this uh, functionality, right? The moment you use final keyword, okay? So you cannot actually override a method, override a final method. It means you are placing a restriction in such a way that this method cannot be overridden, right? Uh, yeah, right. So we got something about this final keyword. Okay, you can use the final keyword for a method. So the moment you use final keyword for a rep to represent a method, it means the method itself is final. The method itself is final. You cannot you cannot perform what the operation of overriding. Okay. So also we have discussed sort of many examples on top of uh, this access modifiers with respect to overriding. I don't think we need much explanation on this. Okay, these topics are really easy, right? And today uh, the one more uh, input, uh, one more interview question that you may come across in the future. Okay, can we override override the static methods? Can we override the static methods? Okay. So before I even answering to this question, let us understand this. Let us understand this first. Then we will think about if we can override the static methods or not. Right? If you have an option to allow people in, please do so. Right. Now let me take uh, let me take the paint screen. Okay. So let me take few cases. Okay, this is uh, one case. Okay, let me uh, reproduce few more cases, second case, third case, and fourth case. Okay, so we know, we know if the parent class method is, uh, if the return type of the parent class method, or if the parent class method is a non-static method, the non-static method is also called as what? The instance method. Okay, and even if the child class method is non-static. Okay, these two combinations are always possible. So no explanation is required. Okay, non-static, you can override a non-static method with another non-static method. Okay, this topmost uh, methods, uh, the methods that is getting represented in, in the above part is called as the parent methods. The method that is getting represented in the below part is called as child, child, child class methods. Okay, so this combination is possible, guys. This is possible. Yes or no? This is always possible because look at the example okay this is a, a non-static method why non-static method you are not using the static keyword so non-static you can call it as a non-static method or, or you can also call it as instance method this is also non-static method two methods are not non-static and uh, if you go by the rule the method name is same the return type is also same the access modifier is also same right you can always override the non-static method so the child class method is non-static, the parent class method is non-static or you can also call it as instance method, they are always possible, right? Likewise, if I take the parent class method as a static method, the parent class method is static, okay, if the child class method is non-static, we need to find this combination, okay, and if the parent class method is non-static, and if the child class method is static, Right, and the last combination is if the parent class, if both the parent class as well as the child class method is static static. We need to identify these cases. We need to identify the possibilities of these combinations. First combination is possible. Okay, we need to understand whether this combination is possible or not. Parent class method is static, child class method is non-static. Right, so let us try to understand this. Okay, when I place the static keyword. 
when I place the static keyword, the parent class method, and uh, if I keep the child class method as non-static, okay, can we really uh, achieve the concept of overriding here? No, we cannot achieve. We cannot achieve. What happens if I execute this code? If I compile this code, what happens actually? Test it out. Java. Okay, we are seeing. See, look at the error. M1 in the C cannot override M1 in the P. What it says, overridden method is static. It is saying, you have taken the overridden method. Okay, this method is called as overridden. The method that is being used in the child class is called as overriding method. We have discussed this, uh, you know, uh, terminologies already. So, no, no explanation is required here. Overriding method, overridden method. So, it says, the error says, you cannot achieve the overriding because the method M1, the overridden method is static. Right? It is not possible. The non static method cannot override the static method. So it is just like, you see, uh, you can do a comparison. When you go to the movie, right? When you go to any movie, you can do the comparison between two heroes, two actors. In Tamil film industry, you can take uh, Vijay and Ajit as an example. You can do the, you can rate them, you can, uh, you can do the comparison between two heroes or you can do the comparison between two uh, heroines. You can rate them, uh, like uh, comparison can happen between two heroes or it can happen between two heroines, two actresses. You cannot compare an hero and heroine. Likewise, if you want to achieve the overriding, overriding okay, the, the methods, the method type should be same. So, this is completely opposite. One side you are taking a static method, second side you are taking a non static method in the bottom side. Okay, this non static methods are always the object level methods. Okay, they are we always call it as the object level methods because to access non static method, we, re we, re we require to create an object. But static methods are not like that, they are very special methods. Why they are very special? You can access this method without even creating an object. That's why it is called as class level methods. This is object level methods. You cannot achieve the concepts of overriding with the object level method versus class level methods. That's why we are getting an error. Okay. Can I say that? Can I conclude that? Okay. What was my previous question? What was my what was my question? Right? Can we override the static methods? The answer is no. We cannot override the static methods or the concept of UNCEPT concept of overriding is not possible with the static methods and when you try to do the overriding with the static methods the static method you will get the following error what was the error that we have with us what was the error the error says clearly compiler is uh, is very clever than us so it is even giving why the error is coming up it says overridden method is static so it is not possible okay. compile time error compile time error right what's the compile time error that we got we have got this compile time error and what is our program what is our program so this is our program right so let me include the program as well right now the question is why it is not possible possible or why to be specific why static methods can't be over done let me remove this the answer is the static methods are the class level methods and the non static methods or the object level methods and 
their memory areas their memory areas are different so you can't achieve the concept of overriding with the static methods okay the concept of overriding is applicable only for the non static methods the concept of overriding or the concept of method overriding method overriding is possible only with non static methods or instance methods okay this is the takeaway okay so by my definition we can also conclude that okay so this combination is not possible combination is not possible okay and even even you cannot take the non static in the parent class and you cannot take the static in the child class this combination is also not possible you can compare hero with hero you can compare heroine with heroine you cannot do the uh, opposite comparison it's also not possible okay now there you will get a question what if i have a static method what if i have a static method in the parent and a static method in the child is this possible or not possible that could be a question sir only if it is static no, only the comparison is in the opposite way static non static non static static definitely it is not possible oh, that is the conclusion and uh, it is proven programmatically okay is there any possibility with this combination static static is there any possibility Yes, possibility is there. Now, please ensure there is a you will not get any error. But the concept is not called as method overriding. It is called as method ID. What is it? Method ID. Okay. When I run this code, when they run, when I run our previous code, okay. So let me take static here. It is already static. Let me take static here as well. So both are static. Okay, when I run this code, compiler will be happy. Compiler will not throw any error. Okay, no error has been thrown. We will get, we will even uh, during the execution, okay, nothing is going to uh, be act as an hindrance to us. No obstacles. So we are getting something main because this is the only instruction that is given in the main method. What is really happening? I have just said that overriding is not possible with the static method, but the compiler is not uh, throwing any error. So, is this because both the methods are static, or is there any some other reason? Let us do the investigation. Let us do some re uh, research and development here. Okay. So, let me take this program. Focus here. Very very important for the interview room, especially this question. Okay. So keep keep the point in the mind. I mean, keep the point. What was the point that I have mentioned previously? The concept of overriding is possible only with non-static. This is the point. Okay. I, we need some justification for this point. No, we need some justification. Why we need some justification? Because when we, when I am dealing with the static methods, we are not getting errors. Then how can I say that it, it is achieved only with non-static methods? We are not getting any, any errors with the static methods. But my, my statement is completely opposite. The violation. Let us understand this in a better way. See, so the moment I take static, static. Okay, let me remove this. Let me remove this. Remove this. We do not want to do that. Okay. Firstly, let us understand. Let us try to assume this. The both the methods are non-static methods. I am removing the static keyword. Focus here. I just want to remove the. Okay. Now, if I ask you about this class, you can say. Uh, this class has three i mean uh, this particular program has three classes okay one is class b second one is class c class c is extending p and there are two methods okay this is the uh, method in the parent class and this is the method in the child class and again if i ask you if i dig you some more question you would say these two methods are non-static methods or instance method yes or no the non-static method now you see if i perform the object creation for non-static method a o b j equal to new a Right. If I call obj dot m one first case, okay. Next, next b obj equal to new b. 
okay if i do obj dot m2 case 2 okay third case what is the third way to create an object a okay this should be obj2 let us take because already obj variable is there so i am taking obj2 obj2 okay third statement a obj3 equal to new b i a is coming here always p i'm sorry guys p and c because parent and child class c is uh, parent parent child child p parent and child okay perfect object creation is perfect and uh, obj3 dot uh, m1 it also be m1 in some other class i was using a b as an example now i am using p and c as an example so there is a confusion here okay. so we have created object how many objects has been created okay, this should be here this should be here okay. how many objects has been created we have created three objects object one i mean object one object two object D. what was the overriding concept what is the concept of overriding okay you can create an object for the parent class okay the method resolution will always happen in the runtime yes or no the method resolution will always happen in the runtime okay the method of the runtime class will get executed in the console okay what i am doing it here first instruction obj dot m1 when i execute obj dot m1 okay obj is of p type no issues but look at the lh i mean rhs side object is created being created for p p class the class parent class so the output is going to be what uh, m1 method of the parent class will get executed we are calling obj m1 okay, runtime resolution okay the object is being created for the parent class so the respective method inside the parent class will get executed so output is going to be what p class right and the second object is created for c obj2 equal to new c okay and we are calling again we are calling m1 which m1 will get executed Look at the right hand side. Object is created for the C class. The M1 method inside the C class will get executed. So, don't you think that output has to be what C class? Okay. Now the third. Now the third. Now the third one. Third one is what? P OBJ3 equal to new C. Okay. Object is being created for the C class. Runtime. Runtime. Okay. It will not look at the reference variable. It will not look at the reference variable. I mean, to the LHS. It will look at the RHS side. For which? For which class the object is getting created? Object is getting created for the C class. M1 method of the C class has to get executed. So, uh, so in the output, the answer should be what C class. To execute this code, the output has to be what P class, P class, and C class. This is the output, right? So, this is the output with the what with the non-static method or the instance method. So here we are achieving 100% overriding because overriding is possible only with the non-static method or instance method. Overriding is achieved. Right? Now, now let me copy this. Let me copy this. Okay. Uh, let us use this space. Okay. What if I make static? So our question is, what if these two methods are static this is static and this is also static you know two methods are static methods okay. if two methods are static methods okay forget about this completely forget about this okay i'm removing this if two methods are static methods see the see the resolution okay the method resolution will happen at the compilation time what is the first object creation p let me take in back I should also remove this. Okay, we are working with static methods now. Okay. Now, uh, p p obj equal to new p. Okay, obj dot m1. Okay, uh, then what is it? C obj e obj one equal to new c, right? obj1 dot m1 right the last one is what uh, the last way of creating an object is what parent to child 
POBJ2 equal to Q T. Right? OBJ2 dot M. Okay. Again, I have created object. Again, three objects are created. This is object one. This is object two. This is object three. Okay. First is parent to parent, child to child, parent to child. Okay. We are calling same M1 method, same M1 method, M1. But ensure that these two methods are static methods. Previously, it was non-static. These two methods are non-static. But these methods are static methods. For the non-static method, see the results P class, C class, C class. Now see what will happen with the static method. Okay. And again, for the non-static method, you method resolution is happening in the runtime. You should always note the RHS. RHS. This is LHS. RHS. After the assignment operator, after the equal to operator, Okay, the respective method of this new keyword, respective method of the object creation will will get what will get invoked or will get will get called. But but when you do the uh, I mean when you try to perform the overriding with the static methods, okay, there is no concept of overriding here. Instead, what will happen? You know, let us see. Okay, what is what we are doing in the first line? Object is created. We are calling what obj dot m1. Yes or no? Obj dot m1. Now this time. M1 will be called based upon the uh, LHS, based upon the reference. Okay, this part will be considered based. This part will be considered. M1 will be checked in the P type, respective P class M1 will get executed. So the output is going to be what? P class. Second, okay, again we are calling M1. M1, it will check in the right hand side, I mean uh, uh, left hand side, reference side. Respective reference variable type of M1 class will get executed. Okay, M1 it will look into the C class M1 and C class will get executed. Okay, these two will be same even though in the above case in the in the below case these two output is going to be same. Now you you will understand the main difference. Okay, when you the moment you try to execute call a call a method based upon this object creation, it will consider the LHS. This side it will consider. Okay, so what is the type of P? What is the type of obj2? obj2 is of p type. Okay. M1 method inside the p class will get executed. So output is going to be what? p class. Okay. Compare the difference in the top, in the over, in the non-static methods, we are getting p class, c class, c class because of the overriding concept, just because of the overriding concept, because method resolution will happen in the runtime, runtime in the sense RHS side. This part, this part, okay. But when you use static methods, there is no concept of overriding. When there is no concept of overriding, method resolution will always happen in the compilation type, which is in the LHS side. The respective method will get invoked. So output is going to be what? P class, C class, P class. Where is the proof? Where is the proof? Okay. Now see, this is. Let me take both the methods are non-static. This method is non-static. This method is non-static. Right. Now I want to do what? P obj1 equal to or P obj equal to new P. Okay. Uh, obj dot m1. Right. Let me copy this. P, P obj equal to new C. This one is obj1. Let us take it as obj1 because you cannot duplicate the reference variables. Right. And uh, P OBJ2 equal to Q C. So this is OBJ2. Now you see, focus here two methods. This one, um, one method in the parent class and the second method in the child class are non static methods. Okay. Now when I execute this, overriding concept is going to get achieved. So what we are getting P class, C class, C class. Are we, are we getting the same output? P class, C class, C class. Same output, no? Agree? Because of overriding. Because of overriding, we have achieved this. Because method resolution will happen in the runtime. New keyword is going to take care which method needs to get executed. RHS side. Okay. Now let us do what? Let us add static keyword in both the methods. Static. And uh, here also static. Okay. Now let us try to uh, execute this. P class, C class, P class. See, our research and development is perfect. See? 
why we got this method resolution is happening at the compilation time the method is getting resolved during the compilation time that is not called overriding that is called as what method hiding this concept is called as what method hiding you can achieve this method hiding when you try to use the static methods in the parent class as well as, as, well as in the child class of the same type same return type same method name and same access modifier you think that you can achieve method overload overriding you think that you will achieve overriding but that is not overriding this concept is called as what method hiding making sense when someone is asking you what is method hiding in java what is method hiding in java you should say okay when you use the static methods of same return type same access modifier access modifier and the same signature signature okay the method resolution happens at the compilation time and the concept of method id gets introduced okay why method adding because uh, for this especially 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 for this object creation usually this method needs to get executed right when it is a non static method this method needs to get executed but instead of executing this method okay this method is getting executed it means this method is getting hidden this method is getting hidden you will uh, you will understand when you try to you know uh, practice lot of problems on static methods do the i mean when you try to do these combinations these four combinations very important combination is four combinations okay the last combination is called method id okay the first combination is always for method overloading making sense everyone are we good are we good with the static static thing Yes, no. Only Chaitanya is answering yes. What about others? Are you with me? Hello. Type something in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Let us produce to the next. Uh, next uh, overloading. Overloading is a small topic, but overriding. You know, you need to. We need to deal with lot of uh, test cases. Okay. So that you will be very very much comfortable in the interview room. Okay, now the next topic is method overriding with respect to Java exceptions. Okay. So I will tell you what is exception. Exception is a future topic for us, but even in the exception handling, exception handling is a future topic. So when there is an uh, unexpected event occurred, the program will get terminated abnormally. Okay. So in order to avoid that, you know, there is a concept called exception handling in Java. Okay? It's a it's a five days topic. Okay. But even in the exception handling, you will encounter the concept of overriding. So I am take I'm now I'm going to teach you something that has to be Taught in the exception handling concept, but I think okay, uh, it would be appropriate if I introduce this concept today. Right? Let us start. This very easy. No, I, there will be no confusion. I will ensure that you are getting, you are getting what? You are getting best out of this. Okay? Let me uh, show you some. Let me draw some exceptional handling hierarchy. This two is pinned. Okay. Let me draw a graph here. Exceptional handling classes. What is it? Exceptional handling classes. Okay, to handle any exceptions in Java, or if to handle any exceptions in Java, Java has come up with many predefined many predefined classes in the Java library. Okay, 
so there are uh, many uh, predefined classes but i will introduce the prominent classes very important classes okay so the topmost class is throwable okay under throwable you have you have two classes one class is what exception class and second class is what error class don't worry about this word get used to this word so after one week you know you will become expert in exception handling also just remember this diagram forget about what is exception handling this is the this is something that we will be discussing in the future okay, for now to understand the exception handling concept with respect to overriding you just have to focus this diagram that's it right so under this throwable right i mean under this uh, throwable i'm sorry exception class under this throwable you have uh, exception class and you have error class okay under this exception class you have many exceptions like uh, runtime exception runtime exception okay let me take shortcuts not required to take like, the lengthy words re means runtime exception anyhow we will be discussing this in the future okay the second one is io exception io means input output exception Okay. the uh, third is interrupted interrupted exception or else i can take i okay and we also have what servlet exception there are so many exceptions like this okay. we have so many exceptions and under error we have virtual machine error okay. we have vm error okay under vm error we have out of memory error okay and uh, we have stack overflow error okay and again under runtime exception we have uh, let me take a few more classes here few more classes java classes i am talking about arithmetic exception we have we have null pointer exception we have we have uh, cast cast class cast exception we have it keeps going okay these are the important exceptions okay under this io exception okay we have file not found exception and we also have what uh, i think uif exception we have fin file not found exception and we have uof exception okay so this is a typical hierarchy you don't worry about this words just just you should worry about what you should worry about which one is the parent class and which one is the child class don't worry about this words let me repeat don't even think about this word just think about the just think about the chart look at the chart try to identify which one is parent and which one is child so throwable is the super class for this exception class as well as for the error class okay and and uh, runtime exception uh, io exception uh, you know what is it ie exception and servlet exception okay and again exception class is parent of Okay, by looking at the arrow okay arrow is pointing to some other class which means the arrow which is point uh, arrow is pointing to exception which means exception is a parent and sc is going to be child right and throwable has two arrows that is being pointed towards throwable which means throwable has two children exception and error you need to identify which one is child to which which one or which one is parent to which one if, the, if you identify that then it, it is going to take only five to ten minutes to cover this topic right and this error okay and vm error is child to error class and out of memory error class is child to okay. this is the typical hierarchy this is the typical hierarchy so out of this hierarchy see ah 
Just look at this diagram. Just try to understand. If I ask you throwable class, everything is a class here. Everything is a class here. Everything. This is a class. Exception is also a class. Error is a class. Everything is the name of the class. You need to understand what you need. You don't. You don't have to remember the names also here. You just have to remember only one thing here. You need to identify. If I ask you exception, if I ask you exception, you need to say exception is a class. It has four children. Which is runtime exception, I/O exception, IE exception, SE exception. It has one parent, which is throwable. If I ask you what is the parent of error, what you should say throwable is the parent of error class. If I ask you what is the child child class of throwable, you should say exception class and child error class is child throwable. If I ask you how many children are there for exception class, you should say runtime exception, I/O exception, IE, I mean IE and SE. This identification is important. If I ask you how many children are there for runtime exception, you should say arithmetic exception, uh, null pointer exception, CC. Okay, you, you do not have to see the say the complete words. Just remember this hierarchy. That's it. So by if I point you some to some class and if I ask you if F and F E is a child to I O exception, yes it is. If I ask you what is a parent to F and F E, you should say I O exception. Or you want this. Uh, like this, okay. Right now, now we got an idea about the hierarchy. Okay, forgot about this word, guys. Don't even worry about this throwable keyword. Okay, these things are the future topics, but we cannot uh, separate these things uh, because uh, we are covering overriding. So, this topic, these things are a topic of discussion in the overriding concept. That's why I'm introducing this to you. Okay, this introduction is justified. Okay, please trust me. This is justified. Okay, now, now the questions will be like. Okay, this is our chart. Okay, now questions will be like. First question. First question I will tell you. Okay, before even understanding the questions, there are two types of exceptions again. Okay, there are two types of exception. One is checked exception. Checked exceptions are something that will be checked by the compiler. Second one is unchecked exceptions. Okay. Checked exception and uh, we have what? Unchecked exception. Okay. So among all these, among all these, okay, unchecked exception, this part, okay, so this part, this part, runtime exception and this child classes. This part, this exception, all these classes are unchecked exception. All these are unchecked. And only runtime exception is unchecked. And all the error classes, all the error classes. All this part, all this side. Unchecked. Okay. Apart from this two, apart from this runtime and apart from this error, everything is a checked exception. Okay. I will tell you something. Uh, see, uh, you get out of memory error. When you will get out of memory error, when you try to what uh, you know, copy a movie, when you try to uh, store a movie in your art disk. Okay. Sometimes what happens without even know, uh, knowing the exact size of your uh, you know present art disk size. You, tr you try to copy some files and you try to paste some files. Okay. All of a sudden, you know, it is going to the Windows is going to send, I mean, throw a pop up saying that system is running out of memory. Not only in, even in the phone, if you try to download an application or mobile apps, you get these errors in the runtime. While selecting the apps, no issues. At the time of downloading, you will get this runtime. Those errors are unchecked. Okay. It will not be checked by the system. Likewise, even in Java, some some exceptions, some errors will be missed by the compiler. Those errors, those errors are called as unchecked exceptions. They will happen only in the runtime. During the execution, they will pop up. Okay. During the execution, they will pop up. Those set of exceptions are called as unchecked. Okay. When they are getting popped up during the compilation time, they are called as checked exception. Are you getting the difference? You, you you have two options guys okay you are doing two things one is compilation and second one is what the execution 
okay for the compilation you need a compiler for the execution you need the jvm okay the exceptions that is identify the identify that gets identified by the compiler they are called as checked because they are checked by the compiler the exception exception that is not identified the, by by the compiler they are called as what unchecked exceptions this this knowledge is enough for me. this knowledge is enough to proceed further okay so uh, remember this tree diagram okay and uh, we will try to understand okay what does it mean to introduce this exceptional hierarchy with overriding concept we are discussing overriding okay what impact we have with these exceptions with respect to overriding concept that we will understand now okay focus here i will introduce a simple simple statement okay the first 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 rule first case okay uh, let me take like this okay, a line i am taking okay so in the parent class first case in the parent class if i have a method like public void m1 and in the child class i am also taking the same method public void m1 right so there are two methods parent class public void m1 child class public void m1 but this public void m1 the parent class method throws an exception if you include this additional statement in the parent class and you are not including anything in the child class okay. the question is the interview will ask you is this valid or invalid in the parent class there is a method m1 in the child class there is a method m1 but the parent class method is throwing an exception because uh, there is some logic inside the parent class method okay that is throwing an exception that needs to be caught think like that that needs to be caught okay if you declare a code like this if you additionally use an exceptional statement exception statement is this valid or invalid that could be the interview question okay first thing you need to identify first rule first rule you need to identify whether this exception is a checked exception or unchecked exception okay if it is an if it is an unchecked exception you no need to worry the code the code will compile fine okay rule number 1 rule number 1 First, you need to check whether if it is a checked exception, check whether the exception is checked or unchecked. Okay, if it is unchecked, no issues. But if it is checked, unchecked, no issues. But if it is checked, the relationship should be. Should be parent to child or it should be same what does it mean what does my statement mean okay first first rule what is the first rule check whether the exception is checked or unchecked okay this is an exception class exception cl ex exception class is where this is the exception class okay i have said already only the runtime exception only this part is or unchecked exception but this exception is under which category checked exception category okay rule number one is satisfied rule number one is satisfied what is the second chase what is the second end what is second one if it is checked okay, we have identified that it is a checked exception okay, if it is checked okay the relationship uh, relationship ship should be parent to child or it should be same right i can also include some other thing or parent can have checked exception and child can have nothing okay let us replicate this example in the java program okay same method i'm using the same thing i'm using i'm not doing any changes let me remove this we do not have to worry about this okay parent class this method throws exception throws exception the child method is not throwing any exception this is a non static method okay this is applicable only for what only for the uh, you know uh, only for the non static method because overriding concept is applicable only for the non static method isn't it both are non static this is throwing exception the child class is not throwing any exception okay if i run this code i should not get any compile time error okay it is working fine 
compilation is successful, execution is also successful. Okay, let me uh, system system dot out dot print alarm. Okay, let me print fine. Fine means it is possible. If not, it is not possible. So this is fine. Okay, parent class can throw an ex parent. I mean, the method inside the parent class can throw an exception. The method inside the child class, it is okay if it is not throwing an exception. Right now, you see, now I am changing the rule number two. Now, I see the parent class is throwing an exception, the child class is also throwing what an exception. The exception is same exception. Okay, is it working fine or not working fine? Let us, let us try to test this. Fine, fine. Let me go back to this plain screen. We will check each and every rule here. So now the parent class throws exception, child class is also throws exception. Okay, so this is working fine. This is working fine. Now, now the third case. Okay. Now we will see what will happen. The parent class is throwing what is throwing an exception. And the child class is also throwing an exception, but a different exception. Throws throwable. Okay, now you see. Now you see this is the direction. This is the direction. For overriding, this is the direction. Okay. The, direction. In the parent class, we have what? We have exception. Okay. In the child class, it is also throwing a kind of exception, but this is throwable. The keyword throwable here. Keyword throwable. Right? Is it matching or is it not matching? Okay. So, what we are doing, we have placed the child class exception because uh, this throwable is parent to this exception. So, this is going to be a child. Identify which one is child. This is child. With respect to throwable, this is parent. Yes or no? This is child, this is parent. So that, that is how the hierarchy is, right? Right? We are dealing with two classes. One is exception class, second one is throwable class. Identify the relationship. Relationship between exception and throwable. Which one is parent? Which one is child? Okay. Exception and throwable. Throwable is parent, exception is a child. Okay. Let us see whether this is going to work or not. Okay. Go to the problem. Okay, this is exception and this is throwing or throwable. Okay, see, over overridden method does not throw throwable. It is not happening. So this is not fine. Okay, if this is not fine, uh, is this fine? Now fine. Okay, the conclusion here is very simple. Okay, the exception hierarchy can be anything. Okay, it can be anything. But the exception that the parent class method is throwing should always be a parent case. Okay, the third case. Okay, this case is uh, failed. The second case has been failed. Okay, the third case. What the, what did I just take? And I just did the opposite. I have used throwable here. Okay. And in the bottom, in the child class, I have taken exception. Okay. Try to find the relationship between throwable and exception. First thing you need to do. Try to find the relationship between throwable and the exception class. What kind of relationship they both have. Okay. Go back to the diagram. Throwable is parent, exception is child. Right? So, can I mark it like throwable is what? Throwable is parent, exception is child. Completely possible. Child class exception can override the parent class exception. Possible. That's why we did not get any error. That's why the output is what? Fine. We will, we will see uh, two few more examples to get much comfortable. Okay. The next example is going to be, uh, let me take it as exception and IO exception. Okay. Uh, exception and IO exception. Okay. I'm taking it as exception. And here I am taking it as 
I O exception. Okay, let me run this. I should I O should be in small cases, I guess. Guys, guys, please turn on. Please be on mute. Okay, I am taking IO exception, I am taking exception class. I am making any spelling mistake. Okay, uh, see, uh, we need to use Eclipse Editor. Okay, so we do not have to waste time on using this Eclipse Editor. Uh, so, what I will do is, I will just give you the cases. I will just give you the cases. You will try to no space here. Okay, I will I will make use of the space. Okay, first case. Okay, the top case is going to be parent and the bottom case is going to be child. Okay. Throws exception throws io exception okay now you need to identify the relationship between exception and the exception let me let me identify two more cases second case uh, throws uh, io exception I go option okay, and uh, let me take it as throws exception. Third case, let me copy this throws IO exception. We will discuss five cases. Throws IO exception. Throws EOF. Exception file not found exception. Third case, let us take two more cases. Fourth case, okay, we will take IOF exception and uh, null pointer exception. Close IO exception parent class. Close null pointer exception is there any other case that i can include okay these four cases would be fine for now okay now uh, when so the topmost i mean in the uh, first point okay in the first point if you see there are two throws keyword right so the first throw is for parent and the second throw is for child let's so just look at this combination okay, look at this combination okay just try to identify the relationship Try to identify the relationship between these two classes, exception and IO exception. Okay, what relationship we have with exception and IO exception? Right? 
so io exception is what io exception is child to exception right so do we have the same hierarchy here yes we do have this same hierarchy the parent class is I mean uh, the topmost is parent the bot bottom most is what child okay this part is completely direct okay and second case second case uh, we have uh, two exceptions io exception and we have what exception okay go to the chart go to the chart and see the relationship between io exception and exception okay exception is parent io exception is child sir no exception is parent io exception is child okay the relationship is from child to parent okay always it should be parent to child okay always to remember this top should be always be parent bottom one should always be child but it is completely in the reverse direction child to parent is not possible second case is not possible okay third case okay io exception and uh, uh, you know eof exception and fne exception first try to find the relationship between this three one two and three what is io exception where is io exception this is io exception okay and okay this is parent io exception is parent you can write it here directly parent okay and we have two other exceptions separated by comma eof exception and fnfe exception uh, fnfe exception and eof exception they both are children to io exception so no issues one parent and uh, we have uh, two children c comma c possible right this is also valid one this is also valid one look at the fourth case fourth case is we have exception right and the null pointer exception okay exception is the parent and null pointer exception where is null pointer exception this is np okay so remember one thing null pointer exception is an unchecked exception when one of the exception is an unchecked exception you, you do not have to what you do not have to consider uh, comparison okay because the uh, overriding concept is applicable only for the checked exceptions not for the unchecked exceptions if any one of the exception is unchecked this is unchecked exception so the overriding concept is uh, not applicable for the unchecked exception so you do not have to do any kind of comparison this is also completely valid right so this is the complete conclusion about the overriding concept with respect to exceptions you do some practice i am getting an error because i am not using the right words here making a mistake uh, in editor i will not i mean i uh, will not get any error because we need to use the right keyword i, I think some kind of uh, you know mistake is there i am not sure okay, i need to import some kind of things here but in the eclipse editor we can do this and if i start introducing this exception handling concept same same hierarchy we are going to discuss it once again but for a different purpose yet the purpose is with respect to overriding in the future we will discuss the same thing but for a different purpose right now and now the next question is what want to extend and uh, okay we will see about this uh, two more uh, two more case studies are there overriding with where org methods and uh, also we have the overriding concept with uh, variables variables those concepts we will discuss tomorrow okay then we will start abstraction okay and let me